All right, so today we have another speed reviews video. So this is where I do a quick kind of like to the point reviews on products that I've been testing. I'm showing you a bunch of them on my face, how they go on. My whole face right now is wearing the products I'm gonna be talking about. This is where I just am able to like update you on products once I've tried them more. So maybe I mentioned them first in other videos, but now I'm giving you my final review. Here's my thoughts, getting down to business here. Oh my God, right as I start to film. All right, I'm gonna give that a minute, see if that stops. Fingers crossed for us. Okay, that thing was on for about 20 minutes, so naturally I made another cup of coffee and just stared out the window at it, waiting for it to stop. But let's just get into the products. I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful. If you do while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And I'm gonna have all the products linked down below in the description box, like always, so if there's anything you wanna check out, links are down below. All right, so starting off with the AOA Blurfection Face Primer. So this is a dollar. AOA makes some killer stuff. Some of my favorite products like of all time come from AOA. Their lip masks, the highlighter. I'll leave a few of my favorites down below. This one, I feel like I can definitely live without. I was hoping this would be like a super good $1 blurring primer because it is hard to find good blurring primers. Feels like balmy, like wet when you first touch it, but when you blend it out, it leaves like a silky kind of feeling. It gives it like slick kind of base. So if you're someone who likes that, you might like this primer, but it's not super blurring. I don't put this over my pores and I'm like, whoa, my pores are looking amazing right now. I don't think you really need this one. This is the AOA Vita Glow Tinted Moisturizer with Vitamin C. So another product by AOA. This is one of their newer products. I have the shade Fair. So this is actually a really good shade match for me when I don't have tanner on. This is actually very nice. It's thicker than I expected and it goes on. Like it's definitely a thick kind of consistency. You do really have to like blend it in. So it's not something that I feel like is like a quick throw on kind of thing. You do have to like work it into your skin, but once it's on there, it really melts in. I would say this is actually light to medium coverage. It has some decent coverage and it just looks like skin. It gives a really pretty glow, but not like overboard glow it doesn't emphasize texture it does just sink in really beautifully and i almost feel like this is one that like looks better throughout the day as your skin is kind of like warming up and your natural oils are coming through oh i do like this one it does have like a tacky kind of finish i don't think it's a product that feels like super undetectable on the skin if you're looking for like a lightweight tinted moisturizer this is like a little bit thicker but it does look really nice and it doesn't look thick on the skin if that makes sense new release from it cosmetics this is their cc nude glow spf 40 they say it's a color correcting medium coverage skin tint, has brightening glow serum. So I've tried all the It Cosmetics CC products. My favorite from them is still the CC Illumination, like out of all of them. So I have thoughts on this one. So I would say this is true light coverage. I don't think you can really get medium coverage out of this. It's not buildable. If you have like stuff to cover up, if you have scarring, whatever, it is still gonna come through. But I like the coverage on this when I am going for light coverage to where I feel like it evens out my skin tone really nicely. Right now I have on the shade is natural medium. I have light medium and natural medium and natural medium is good like tanner shade for me. Every other time I've put this on besides today because I did something different underneath, which I'll tell you, it has not been my favorite. Every other time I've used it, it looks textured. It like clings to my skin weird. And then as it sets down, it looks worse. Like it almost like settles in. But today I think the magic ingredient to this is the Paula's Choice BHA. I've talked about how using that underneath your makeup can alter foundations like quite a bit because it is very glowy and it gives you this like just radiant smooth kind of glow to your skin underneath foundation. So it is one of my favorite things to use if I want a super glowy look. That underneath this was like winning combo. I feel like right now it looks amazing. It looks really pretty. We'll see if like as this video goes on and as I film, if it does start to like settle like it normally does and look worse because right now it's still looking really pretty and I've had it on for probably about 40, 50 minutes so far. So this is the first time I'm actually liking it on my skin. So I don't know if the Polish Choice is like the key to this product or what. Let me know if you've tried this, what you think of it, because yeah, every other time I've tried it, I have not been impressed. Do I like this enough to where I'm like, okay, now you need to go run out and get it. I don't think so because I can get this exact look with my Purito BB cream where it just gives like the smooth pump look and that lasts well. And I, you know, I can adjust that one. That's just like one of my favorites. And that one's $10, but I am curious your guys' thoughts on this. If you've tried it, what, what do you think? Next up, we have a drugstore brow pen. I love trying brow pens. I went through a major brow pen phase. Lately, I've been just doing a brow pencil with like the Kosas brow gel, but this is one I've been testing. It's from Walmart, Profusion Cosmetics Good Brow Day. 
It says it's a waterproof brow pen and yeah, I agree that it is very, it's actually super smudge resistant. The other day I wanted to see if it really like held up. So I actually put this on and then let it dry down and I didn't have any other makeup on and I just like rubbed over it with my finger and it was not budging. Like it was staying on. I do like this one. I like the tip on this one. It has a nice and fine tip and the product comes out easy. This shade for me is a little bit darker than I would like. So I think I would go down a shade. Good drugstore option. So I posted a TikTok on the Maybelline lipstick and a lot of people wanted to know what the brown liner was that I was wearing and it's the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Color Ink. I really don't like the applicator on this. It's like felt tip and it's just bizarre. Like it's just too big. But the product is like the prettiest brown color and it stays on. It holds up really well. A lot of times I like to take liquid liners and then smudge it out and it does turn, it's interesting, it turns like a cooler undertone when you smudge it out. It doesn't go away. You can still smudge it but what I like to do is kind of like smudge out the edges with a flat liner brush and then kind of go over it one final time so that the edges are smudged but then I still get like a nice richer color towards my lash line. So this one you can smudge. I wouldn't say it's like amazing at smudging but if you're just looking for like a pretty brown super long lasting waterproof liner i do like this one and i have been wearing it a lot and i feel like it helps to make my eyes pop the other brow product i have on with that pen i probably should have done this one first is the sephora waterproof retractable brow pencil i do like this one this one is affordable i like how tiny the tip is that's what initially like attracted me to this pencil it's a good amount of not too creamy not too stiff it is easy to get a softer look because when you use the spoolie to kind of brush it up it does is like fade out, which some people will like, some people won't like, so it just depends. The shade I have is 08 Chocolate Brown, and I do like the color. All right, next up, the lip combo that I have on today. So I think I talked about these in a past speed review, the e.l.f. Love Triangle Lip Filler Liner. I have been using these still, and I do really like them. Soft Pink is my more used shade. If I'm doing more of a cool tone lip, Mauve is the way to go. I actually started out with the shade Soft Pink today, and then I realized I wanted to go cool tone, so I switched it to Mauve. I love both of those tones, but then one of the new lip products I've been testing is the Makeup by Mario Nude Suede. So this is like a suede matte liquid lip, basically. First off, love the color of this. It is hard to find tones like this. It is cool tone, it is light. So it's a really good mixing one for me. I love just like putting it on top of something darker and it just lightens it up really fast. But if you have dryness or if you have lips where like lip product tends to settle in them, this one can be a little bit of a clinger. So anytime I use this, I do put a gloss over top just to kind of add that moisture in and so it looks a little bit smoother. I think it smells really good. It smells like coconut actually, like a mix between like coconut and vanilla. It's not one of those liquid lipstick formulas though that dries down and it's like on there because it's more of like that moussey suede kind of feel. It almost reminds me more of, you know, the NYX suede, whatever those were called. It's not like an ultra dry down liquid lipstick. I'm testing so many glosses, so many lip products. The one I have on over top today is the Kosas Wet Lip Oil. This is in the shade Unzipped. Love the packaging on this. It's really unique. The applicator on this is interesting. It's like a very tiny, tiny applicator. I really like the way this one looks. It does give you that like wet lip look. It's very glossy. It has a nice like light nude color, not too pink, not too cool. It has like very small like micro glitters in it, not to the point where you can see it, just where it gives that like really pretty reflect. Like, the name is interesting to me because I don't think it's a lip oil at all. I think it's just a gloss. It smells like vanilla, but also like a little bit chemical -y or something. If you like a really lightweight gloss, this one is definitely lightweight. Because of that, it's not super long lasting. I, like my Lawless gloss lasts way longer on my lips, but I do like the look of this one. I like layering it with stuff, but it is one that I need to like, you know, touch up. Okay, you know those products that you like, you think you don't like, but then you keep reaching for it. So obviously you like it enough to want to wear it. That's where I'm at with the Patrick Ta Major Plumping Gloss in the shade Full Syringe. So I wanted like a just ate a popsicle summery kind of gloss color and that is what this gives. Like I, I love the color of this, which I think is why I keep reaching for it. It has a like cinnamon scent. It is supposed to be a pumping gloss. It almost like gives me that weird throat thing. I don't know if anyone else gets that with certain glosses. I don't love that, but I love the color of this. So I think I just need to find a gloss that is this color because the thing is this one isn't super pigmented, but it just adds like the right amount of that like fuchsia cherry kind of color. It also is nice for layering on stuff. I'll use this with Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I'll wear it with like more neutral cool tone lip liners and it still works because it adds that like vibrance back into my lips and it just looks very natural so i have been really liking this just 
using with the liner, nothing underneath, no lipstick, and then putting this over top. As far as plumping, it's not too tingly, but I feel like that definitely goes away in like a few minutes. You don't notice it. This one is also more of like a lightweight. I did put it on today over top just to add a little bit more pink into my lips, but on its own, it definitely looks more like cherry pink. Two different lip masks I've been trying. So the first is Sam Ravindahl's brand, the Auric Bare Plush Ritual Ceramide Lip Treatment. And then the other one is the Major Glow Softening Lip Mask by, again, Patrick Ta. Love the packaging of both of these. The Auric one opens on the top and you actually get this little guy to like scoop your lip product with if you want. I just usually use my finger. This one's a really pretty light pink, but more like cool toned. This does have some pigment to it. So I love that with lip masks. I want my lip mask to like have a little bit of color because I just love that, especially like a lighter pink color. Very subtle vanilla scent. It's not like too overpowering. The packaging is pretty heavy because it's like, you know, frosted glass packaging. I really like this one. It doesn't give me like the super juicy lip look. I would say this is more of like a softening kind of feeling lip mask rather than like a super juicy, you know what I mean? It's gonna like make your lips soft, but not super plump looking. And then the Patrick Ta actually looks like it's gonna be very similar, but this actually has like virtually no color. It's pretty sheer. I wish this one was a little more tinted, but I love the scent of this one. It's very minty, very fresh. This one, if you put like a decent amount on at night and then sleep in it, my lips are still plump like in the morning, which I like. I like the lip product to like stay there overnight. This one also is more of like a softening lip mask. I definitely notice that my lips are like pretty soft in the morning and moisturized when I wear this one and like really coat it on. So I think it just depends. If you don't care about like the look of it, but you just want something like very moisturizing, this one is good, but it's not gonna give you any kind of pink look or gloss or anything like that. If you're someone who wants the moisture of lip masks, but you like the glossy, like plump look and you want a little bit of color, honestly, just get the AOA one. It's like $1.50 or a dollar. I love the rose shade. I just used it up. It's super pretty. A concealer that I really did not like is the Lawless Concealed the Deal Full Coverage Concealer. So this is new from Lawless. I have the shade Marcona. I had high hopes for this because I do like one of the Lawless foundations and it says it's supposed to be full coverage. I don't know, man. I'm confused by this one. This is not nowhere near full coverage. I would say I get like light coverage with this one. It just looks so dry. It's not creamy. It doesn't blend out well. Here's the applicator. I've had this one probably like eight different times with like different foundation, different combos. And every time I had to like put something else over top because it just did not look good. Oh my God, I forgot about my coffee. Hold now. Okay, two ColourPop palettes that I've been testing. I actually included one of these in a reject in my last Raves and Rejects video, I'm pretty sure. The ColourPop Twist to Slate and then the ColourPop Set in Stone. So these are like, you know, sister palettes here. One is cool toned, one is warm toned. Let's start off with Twist to Slate, if in case you didn't hear me talk about it in that video, but I figured I would include this since I am talking about this one too. But the Twist to Slate is like right up my alley. I love these super cool tone colors. This is like what I would reach for on a day to day if it wasn't patchy as heck. Shimmer shades are pretty. The matte shades are just like way too patchy. I don't find that to be the case with this palette, which is what I have on right now. All my eyeshadows are from this palette. I don't find this palette to be patchy at all. So I don't know, maybe I just got like a defective one or I don't know why there's like a difference in quality between these matte shades and then the warmer tone palette. But for whatever reason, yeah, not good. Obviously that one is a little dead, so I haven't been able to use that one. But in these palettes, one interesting thing is you actually get like a cream shade. And I was like, maybe that's a primer. Maybe it's just something you put underneath to make the other ones more pigmented. You can kind of use it however you want. I wouldn't say it's like an incredible eye primer. So the way that I've been using it instead and the way that I used it today is just by putting a little bit on a brush over my lid before I go in with the shimmer shades. And it does just help to make them pop a little bit. I like that touch because I feel like that's kind of a new thing. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a palette, having like one cream shade. So I do like that idea, but this palette I do really like. I find myself reaching for this a lot. I like the matte shades in here. The matte shades in this palette blend out well. If I'm going for like a warm look, I have been grabbing this. All right, this has been like love of my light lately. So happy I discovered this. It's the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. This has been sold out all the time. So if this is in stock and you're interested, I would pick it up because it goes in and out of stock and sells out all the time. But I have the lighter shade that they make of this one. Love this because I can use every shade in different ways. I did an Instagram reel on four ways I like to use this, but my most reach for shades are I'll actually mix these two shades right here. I love the pink shade in here as like a highlight and blush topper. It just looks like very natural, gives you that like summery kind of look. 
and this shade I can use for eyeshadow. If you have textured skin, this is one that does sit really beautifully over top. It gives you that like beaming glow look without that like stripey highlighter kind of look. It's not too glittery. It just is like a very flattering, beautiful, strobing kind of palette, but you can also use less and get like more of a natural kind of look. So I've been really loving this. It's also so freaking pretty to use over your lips. Like if you put that pink shade, oh my God, it is beautiful. All right, next up we have another lip product. This is one that I I picked up when I did my big Sephora sale lip product haul did an Instagram reel on that as well but this is like one of those lip products that I've always heard people talk about Dior but I had never tried and I got the shade 373 rose celestial these are just really in right now like this tinted balm kind of thing where it's like a little bit more sheer color but gives you like the plump look out of all the formulas I've tried of these I think Glossier makes the best one Glossier Lucite it does give you that like plump kind of look I love the color of that one this one doesn't give me that like plump look at all and I almost feel like sometimes it it makes my lines just look like a little bit more emphasized on my lips. I'll, I'll do a little hand swatch for you. It's pretty, pretty pigmented too. So it's not as easy to get that like sheer look with Glossier. The thing I like about the Glossier one is I can like go over it a few times if I want it like more pink. But if I just do this, it's like a sheer wash of color versus this one is more of like a lipstick kind of situation, like a satin lipstick. It smells like candy or something. You can see like it is pretty pigmented. I'll do one swipe so you can see. That's one swipe. So if I like really layer it up, there you go. Maybe if I had a lighter pink shade, I would like this more, but this is just one that I personally don't think is worth the money. I feel like Glossier is a little bit cheaper and I like that formula better and I like that color better too. So. This is one that I think you can definitely pass on. All right, this is a new mascara from Essence, their Double Trouble Mascara. I think this might be my least favorite mascara that I've tried from Essence. I usually love their mascara. Probably my all-time favorite mascara is the Essence Lash Princess. So I love a lot of Essence's mascaras, but this one just like really gives me nothing. <laughs> Even when I put on like three coats of this, I'm just like, where is the volume? Where are my lashes? It doesn't do a lot of anything, you know? Like some mascaras are good for length or some are better for volume. This is just like, is literally just like coating your lashes. Like I just don't feel like it gives enough of anything. If you want a good drugstore mascara, get the Essence Lash Princess or the Lottie London Super Fake. All right, the Rare Beauty Tim Moisturizer. So I originally purchased a different shade, returned it, and then got a shade that is a much better undertone for me, which is 26W. The other undertone was like just super orange. So my thoughts on this are on its own, I think it's okay. I don't think it makes my skin look incredible. I'm not like, wowed when I put it on. I do feel like it emphasizes some of my texture a little bit more than I would like. I do like the coverage on its own. I would say it's like a solid medium coverage, but the way that I like to wear this is on top of my tinted SPF. So I'll have the one that I use linked down below. I put that on first and then if I just go in with a sponge and like lightly do a very light layer of this just to get like a little more coverage, but have it still look natural, that's my favorite way. Obviously that's like a really particular way. So I'm not saying like you need to buy the tinted SPF and then buy this. Like I, I just don't think for the price of these two that that would be worth it. But because I already have this, like that's how I've been making it work for me. I don't think on its own, this is a product that I'm recommending that you need to go out and grab. I just have other medium coverage products that I like better. The finish on its own, I would say is a satin finish. It, you can alter it, you know, depending on what you're putting under and over, like with anything. So for me, this is one that like I'm using because I have it, but if this disappeared out of my life tomorrow, I would not feel like I was missing anything. I wouldn't feel like I need to go repurchase it. And honestly, between these two, I think I would go with the Vita Glow over the Rare Beauty because you still get the coverage with this one, but it just looks a little bit more skin-like. But I do think I like the Vita Glow actually over the Rare Beauty. Two super underrated AOA products, the Metallic Butter Creams. They, they say they're gel liners and shadows, especially these shades like I've only used as eyeshadow. But I picked up the shade Love Story because of Dana Ann. We went to the AOA store together in Houston and she got this one. And then I was looking at her wearing it in a video and I was like, Wait, I need that in my life. That is so pretty. The pigmentation and metallicness, very formal, of these is insane. Here's Love Story. Look at that. It is so pretty and it does kind of like change a bit depending on what eyeshadow you have underneath it. So you can make it look really pretty and pink. The way Dana had this on her lid was with like a really pink shadow look and it looked so pretty. And then the shade Glamour is just like a beautiful, super metallic silver or a dollar, are you kidding? 
Look at that pigmentation. Look at that silver, it's crazy. I just use my finger usually and just like tap it on. I don't flake, I just, I really love these. All right, next up, update on the Sony Castrux sponge. So I've been testing this one for a couple months now since San Diego is where I got it. This is from Target. It gets pretty large. This is it dampened right now and you can see like it's literally, <laughs> It's massive. For a more firm sponge, like it is on the firmer side, I do like this. If you're someone who likes a little bit of a firmer sponge, it's not like hard, but you like a big sponge and firm, I think you would probably really like this. I personally like it a little bit smaller just because I feel like I can work with it easier and like get around my nose easier. But as you saw today when I blended out that It Cosmetics CC cream, like it does cover really easily because of how big it is and it does the job. It's not a sponge that I feel like absorbs a lot of product, which I like, but this one I don't like dry. Like you definitely have to dampen this sponge. So I think it'll just be for a specific kind of person who likes a little bit more of a bigger, firmer sponge. Personally, I would rather reach for my Amazon sponges. Those are like my favorites. All right, next up the one size on till dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. I love the can, little cute aerosol can. It is extremely fragranced. Like I'm talking even if this was a perfume, you would need like a spritz of the perfume. There's so much fragrance in this. It's actually, it's wild. I like the scent of it, but it's just way too fragranced in my opinion. The thing I was really curious about because they have an Instagram reel where they like spray this over eyeshadow and then go like this and it like doesn't budge and it really stayed on. So I tried that the other day because I, I've tried this on my face, but you know how it's always hard to tell with the setting spray, like is it actually doing something when you don't have something to compare it to? So I did put shadow, I put the ColourPop shadows on my hand and I did two of them with the setting spray and then two without and then I went like this and I like rubbed it, I should have filmed this. And I noticed that this made the colors pop a lot more and when it fully dried down and then I like rubbed over it with my hand, the ones that had this sprayed over top did not budge but when I went to do it underwater because it does say it's waterproof, they both still came off. So I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but it definitely helps with smudging. So if you have issues with like your makeup staying on or coming off or smudging, whatever, this might be a really good one to try if you're not sensitive to fragrance. If you are, like this is a big no because it's just, like I said, so heavily scented. So because of the fragrance, for me, this isn't one that I like wanna spray on my face every day, but if I have a night or a day where I just feel like I really need my makeup to stay on all day, that's when I will use this from now on. Another mascara, this is the AOA Tall Lash Mascara. So this I actually have layered over one coat of the Essence one because had to had to save the lashes, you know? This is a comb applicator. So this isn't a mascara that I would typically use on my upper lashes because I just find that usually combs don't give like that, you know, great of results for me on my upper lashes, but I like them for my bottom because of the size. This one I can wear on top and bottom, and I do feel like it gives really nice like separation and length. So I actually really like this one. I haven't had issues with this like transferring down to the bottom. I think this could be a good affordable option for the lower lashes. All right, and then last product is the Makeup by Mario Pro Volume Lip Gloss. This is in the shade Mauve Nude. Again, really like the color of this one. This is one that I bought, again, in store Sephora, and I'm finding for, especially for lip products, it just looks so different online versus in store. So I think from now on, like if I can go into a Sephora store to swatch or like look at things, I probably will because I just found a lot more winners <laughs> in store than I have online, just like color wise. But this gloss definitely has glitter in it. I'll swatch these two side by side so you can see. The Makeup by Mario definitely is shinier, but it doesn't stay on as well as the Kosas. I find that this one actually comes off like pretty fast, the Makeup by Mario. Here's Kosas right here and then here's Makeup by Mario. So you see when it hits the light, like the Kosas is definitely still nice and shiny, but the Mario does definitely have like a little extra shine there and it is a little bit more of like a pink color. So I like the way this one looks. I just don't think for the price it's worth the money just because it's not long lasting at all. Like I really feel like when I put this on, I have to like put it on again, literally like 20 minutes later. Lots of glosses, lots of lip products. So that's everything. Those are my updated thoughts on some of the products I've been trying. So I'll have everything listed down below in the description box. If you wanna know my thoughts on a bunch of other products, I have a speed reviews playlist I usually do these videos every couple months, every few months. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I'm going to go microwave my very cold coffee now and get some breakfast. It's time. Today is actually a super freaking busy day. I have one more day here and then I leave out of the country. So I'm like trying to do 5 million errands today, plus film, plus edit. So wish me luck. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.